Hello ladies and gentlemen, Top Pack Gaming Man here. I am still down under here in Australia and I am once again joined by Synth Spaces. G'day invaders, how are you guys? Today I am going to be talking with him about his dark past as a dark. gaming journalist. Dark. Yes, um, <laughs> us YouTubers, we don't normally have nice things to say about gaming journalists for some reason. Don't ask me why, but okay, um, we like picking on them like... <laughs> Yes, yes, actually. I want to talk, I want to ask some questions straight away about gaming journalism before we get to your past. Okay. IGN, for example, I find it really frustrating how them, along with all the other online viewers, they give everything 10 out of 10, and they won't give anything like below a 7 out of 10. So if it's crap, they give it 7 out of 10, which is 70%, which would be a first if you was a university student. I, I, I was kind of guilty. Uh, but I did rip into the odd one or two games, but we'll talk more about that in a moment. But, um... No, I, I was a big Sega fan, and I happened to work in a Sega magazine, so it was kind of biased, I guess. Oh. <laughs> Just so yes, yeah, so here we have, here we have, we've got it here, an exclusive... <laughs> Game reviewers are biased, just from the just horse's mouth. Just a tad. Um, but I was just enjoying the games that I was being given to review. So, But there was, uh, yeah, definitely the odd one or two games that I got handed to me and I actually enjoyed ripping them a new one when I got a really bad one. I wanted to make sure that no one else uh, made the same mistake of having to play that game, never mind pay money for it. So uh, what's ripping a game a new one, would you say, giving it 70%? Mm, four out of ten. Four out of ten. This is probably as low as I ever went. Okay. There was one review though, and this is very controversial. So before I go into that, um, I wrote for a magazine called Megazone, and that was a big thing here in Australia at the time, and uh, it was owned by the distributors of Sega in Australia. So they had a bit of a control over what got published, uh, but for the most part they were pretty much hands off, except on one occasion. I was reviewing a game called Sega. Uh, sorry, Sega. I was reviewing a game called uh, Bart versus the Space Mins. That's right. Oh. Yeah. And they were banking on that being a big hit because it's The Simpsons, and I just couldn't handle that game. I know there's some, probably one or two of you out there, that are like, don't you rip into that game? But it, it's... I don't think there will be, it was horrible. Like, <laughs> oh, Yeah, it was pretty bad, <laughs> I didn't yeah, like there's it. There's no way of liking that game, I had the bloody <laughs> NES version and I, I bloody... Because that oh. was being released, and while that was out, you had... Uh, the Simpsons, uh, the arcade machine, and how awesome was that thing to play? That's that was... great. I love the main game. And yes, I know it was an arcade machine game where you only play it for about five minutes and you're done, but they could have extended it out. They could have done a, a ton of things with that game. Instead, we got Space Mutants. Yeah. yeah. I've fond memories of playing that arcade game in Margate. I'm, I doubt you're familiar with being the other side of the planet. But some of our commenters will, I should imagine. Leave a comment below. Yeah, yeah. if you know Margate, leave a comment. <laughs> but uh, I reviewed it and gave it uh, an absolute terrible score. Uh, As deserved. And uh, when the, the magazine finally got printed out, that was, oh, by the way, my favourite part of working when the magazine finally got printed and we open up the box and get the new magazine. It's kind of like when a YouTube video gets uh, posted. Um, but I looked at that review because uh, I was really interested to see how they managed to print. I wanted to see 4 out of 10. And it got bumped up to 7 out of 10. Oh, look at that. That tells you all, doesn't it? And uh, they changed Disgusting. some of the text. So I rip into the uh, to the editor's room and I just said, look, if you're going to change any of my reviews, don't put my name on the there for it, for God's sakes. I don't want to be associated with giving Simpsons... So basically, the media was like they're the same as they are now. They just love to carry on ramming fake news down <laughs> people's throats. Well, that was the only time it ever happened, uh, I'll okay. be honest. But, but was that was... the only time you gave a game a bad score? No, <laughs> there was other games that I gave bad reviews on, but that was the only time where I, it was blatant that someone had changed and oh, messed disgusting. with the uh, messed with the review. Yeah, but yeah, so I worked at uh, Megazone, and uh, I, the reason why I'm trying to show you guys at home these magazines is that to prove that there was life beyond CVG, EGM. Uh, mean Machines, and I'm sure you can. Mean Machines off. is the one I can remember well. Yeah, it was uh, personally it was my favourite uh, UK magazine at the time. Um, but we were trying to do our own thing in Australia, so we had Megazone. Uh, also, while working at Sega, we had Sega Zone, which was, I guess, the equivalent of Nintendo Power, but it was just nowhere near as good. I'll be honest. Um, but I got featured in it, so I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Megazone evolved. It became a much bigger it went from being 
bi-monthly to monthly, uh, okay. bigger issues. So it was uh, really doing quite well. Um, and then I left Sega and was working in the Gamesman. And then another magazine came out. Because one thing about Megazone was that everyone knew it was owned by Sega and they knew it was kind of biased. So... Hyper Magazine came along. This is issue one, and I've got some uh, articles in this one in particular. Uh, and I don't know if you can what? see that. Is it, yeah. why, does it say, why does it say bloody virtual sex on the front? That, is, that, is that a game? The, it, okay, so I know the true story behind that. They wanted something to make this uh, stand out from the other magazines that were on the news rack at the time. Ah, uh, clickbait. You got it. Yeah. Uh, so this was essentially clickbait before clickbait was even a Like term. most of my videos. Okay. <laughs> He's admitted it, guys. I'm not, I'm not hiding from that. <laughs> so this came out and uh, Sega then, sorry, Megazone then changed to being Sega Me uh, Megazone. And they actually asked me to come back and work for them, which I said, mm, no. Um, and then it phased out, which was a good choice in the end. So um, that's pretty much the magazines that I worked for. I've got a ton of stuff uh, that I ended up uh, having articles printed in. Uh, I'm really glad that we had our own little thing in Australia and we weren't just being uh, puppets to the rest of the world. That's and, great, it's great. Yeah, uh, but you know, we did still buy into the whole EGM. I, I loved, I would buy EGM magazines at $20 a pop, that's Australian dollars, uh, and uh, I'd be getting them uh, shipped in from uh, overseas. Uh, back in the day when we would get two two month old magazines. So you guys complaining about news on the internet? We used to have to wait two months to read the magazines. Yeah, you hear that, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen? Two yeah. months to two read months. fake news back then. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and I ended up getting this job because I was uh, writing my own magazine before I even started working in Sega. I had a big passion for working in a games magazine. That was my you know dream uh, job, working in a games magazine. I got to live it for a short amount of time. So, so whilst you're cool. here for exclusives, have you got any gossip of stuff that went down whilst working for these magazines involving other people? Mm, I, no. I, I know which angle you're aiming for, but no, we didn't have any... There was Because we were doing our own thing. We didn't really have anyone else to um, poke fun at. Or, oh, okay. Yeah. So it was quite isolated experience, really. Pretty much, because from down under, there's nothing around. But there was, I think the only thing that I can really talk about was the one time that I wrote a story and it was turned out to be false. I felt for an April Fool's gag. I was a huge Atari fan. I know you guys out there, there's quite a few of you out there that were also big into the Atari 2600. Or 2600. Two, yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I, there was an article going around saying that Atari are making a new console, which is not too much of a stretch from the truth. The, the Jaguar came out later after, which was a bit of a fail. Do you own a Jaguar? I know, that's one I've not got yet. I'd oh, like wow. to, so it's, yeah, no Jaguar go. yet. I don't have one either. Um, I will want to get one later. But, yeah, so uh, I wrote an article about a new machine coming out from Atari. It turned out to be bogus and fake. And so the next time, because I had my own column called Console Crazy. Oh, nice. Uh, and uh, I had to apologise to my... Your, uh, my readers, sorry. Yeah, that was a that's, humble moment. Yeah, uh, at least you apologise for it. That's more than most newspapers would do these days. I'd hate to work though for a, um, a gaming or magazine or website these days because the amount of flack they get. Like, uh, have the Wall Street Journal apologise yet for what they, those comments they made about PewDiePie? Are they a gaming magazine? I don't even know why no, they're getting they're... involved. <laughs> no, exactly, exactly. It's not even their field. Who are they to comment? But I'm saying I wouldn't want to be, because, uh, you know, we wrote the magazines, we got the articles printed. No, we never got really much in the way of feedback, because now, as soon as you print it and you've uploaded it, you're getting a bunch of dislikes and comments. Oh, you suck. And it's true. It, we yeah. have instant feedback now, so it's much easier Is that to... Feedback or trolling? Yeah, a bit of both, bit of to both. be fair. A bit yeah. of column A, a yeah. bit of column B. Some so, so, yeah. horrible little people out there, aren't there? But... As most of you are nice, so that's good. My, my viewers are pretty good. I've yeah, mine are too, on the Except whole. that one guy that dislikes all my videos. Yeah, I upload videos and they have free dislikes straight away. So there's, free. Uh, there's free people who don't like me, apparently. <laughs> Just free. I so hope. yeah, that was my experience on working in the games industry. Um, I just missed the, the whole... Uh, uh, I guess the experience of getting that new issue come out and looking for your articles because that's what we did back then. Um, didn't care about anyone else's articles. How is the um, games magazine scene in uh, Australia today? Well, Hyper Magazine, 
uh, that's the issue one again, guys. There it is. Um, that's still operating. It's still running today. Uh, awesome. They had to make a change, so they're no longer uh, trying to do exclusive uh, news about um, which games are coming out because the internet's got that killed. Uh, so they do more sort of pieces on uh, politics behind the gaming scene and um, women in gaming and the way they're represented and, and that sort of thing. So I think they've moved away from uh, just covering from a news point of view and more of a journalistic. So. You know, so it's like going from a broadsheet news paper to a pa basically becoming an OK magazine. Yeah, writing actual articles. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. rather than covering news. So, um, guys, if you can get your hands on that one, it is definitely worth tracking down. I don't know what they go for on eBay, but it, buy the Hyper magazines. I still buy them to this day. Uh, definitely worth tracking down. The logo's changed a little bit. I kind of prefer the old logo. Um, and guys, leave in the comments section down below, what was your favourite magazine, and do you still buy magazines today? Anyone? Anyone? Great. Yes. Yeah. And anyone read Retro Gamer magazine? That's for I tend to I do actually, at the moment. damn expensive here, though. Is it? <laughs> it's Everything's like, bloody expensive here. This place is too isolated, <laughs> isn't it? It's I, like 20 bucks an issue or something oh, like that. Oh, <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. But it's a good magazine. I have it is decent. I quite that. like yeah. it. I quite like it. Anyway, that right. was nice speaking to you again. Um, Thank you. Yes, that was great. <laughs> so anyway, cheerio! Cheers, guys.